knowing that we have an Alistair. Alistar is one of the champions that don't really provide much outside of their initial skill usage. So we want to play around that. We don't want to go too deep inside of an Alistar play because once they use their combo, they are pretty much useless. That's kind of the downside to Alistar. His cooldowns are extremely long, and uh, once he uses them, he's kind of not relevant anymore. As far as Sona and Ash goes, that's a lane that definitely wants to just try to poke you out. They're not really looking for too much confrontation. If Ash can get the early level 1 onto you, of course, she can kill. But for the most part, they're not really looking for that all in potential. Whenever Alistair does go in, we do want to make sure that we are looking to kill. Um, again, once he uses his abilities, he's pretty much useless. So... For the most part, if the situation sets us up for a kill, we need to be looking for the kill. If not, pop in a few autos or whatever and walk back. But if we can look for that kill, man, that'd be huge. Looks like we're going to be going for a sneaky deaky play. Let's see what's going to happen. You have to keep in mind that their mid laners gangplank, not really much of a roaming champion. So you don't have to have really worried about that, that roaming. And then their jungler's Lilia, just a farming champion as well as Kane. So again, this is really going to be a... It, sh it shouldn't really be much action down here unless teleports happen. Oh, it's Silas middle. Okay. Did not know that. All right. Different story. <laughs> different story with that. Silas will be roaming his butt off. All right. Going in for a play here. Flash play. Looking to get the all in. And we go ahead and we almost get the kill there. So the, one of the major mistakes that I see right here is that we're looking to seek the all-in with the Q. But the issue here is that you want to get the Ash to be isolated, right? We want to make sure that we get as much damage as possible done when she's isolated. So what we could have done was move top, like move up towards her, because we know there's no wave coming. The next wave coming is right here. There's no way if you walk up, you're going to be hitting, you know, the wave. So if we move up just a little bit, it also blocks her away from getting away from us. She won't be able to get rid of that distance. Um, and then as we walk up, we use our Q when she's over here so that it's isolated Q damage. This was definitely a free kill if we would have played it better than we played it. Um, but as you see, like I said, we do want to make sure that we're looking to go all in a lot more often. So really just kind of work on getting those isolated Qs. They mean the world of difference when you're playing Kai'Sa. As I said, Alistair, once he uses his abilities, he's kind of useless. I definitely think you should be recalling here. There's not really much you can do. You're just kind of forced to farm. This is just not a play you want to be a part of. I know you're trying to push the wave out, but uh, you got to be very, very careful. Cool. Get that recall going. Beautiful. What did you buy? A coal. Okay, so you're trying to wait to get the coal. Got it. All right. Makes sense. I didn't know that's what you were doing. All right. Chilling like a villain. Again, we have to be careful. Silas is in my A. I mean... According to this, he has no HP, but we don't know that in-game unless we were paying attention to the lane. Um, and then we also don't know where Lily is. So those are the two reasons we have to be careful. I love that we're letting the wave push back into us because we want to try to hold it near us. Because they're a poke champion, or because they're a poke lane, they actually have the ability to poke us even if we're shoving them under tower. Right? Um, especially with Ash's volley, she can AoE and it'll smack the minions and smack you. When we pull it here, yes, we do have the opportunity to the opportunity of speaking way too fast i'm excited i'm proud okay so anyway yes if we do hold it here we do have the opportunity of actually getting harassed but the bright side is if alistair does commit to a, an engage they have to run all the way back to the tower so be very very careful of that Cool. Perfect. This, this prevents us from getting ganked. This prevents us from being roamed on. This is cool. Just let it thin out, and then we should be able to kill the Ash. If we notice, the only thing that Ash has is boots, which means she doesn't really have much more damage than we do. We have a coal, so we already have more damage than she does. And then Alistair just has more damage than Sona, in my opinion. Sona doesn't really do much. Exactly as I called it, correct? We want it to be pushed up here because they're going to have to run the entire lane to get to safety. It's not a matter of we can't kill them. It's a matter of we just have to get onto them. <laughs> I see what you tried to do. Um, 
if we had him here, Alistair couldn't go for a play, and if he did, they had the safety of the tower. And so this is generally how you do play a kill lane versus a poke lane. You want to do your best to try to get it near your tower, so that way you can run them down if they try to run. Does he have this? Ooh. Okay, lop him up. Bang, bang. <laughs> What's happening? This is strong. Okay, Alistair, let's go. Use the clap. All right, we're back to lane. Um, this is kind of bad, because if Alistair help shove this out, Kaisa's gonna be in a really, really crappy situation because the wave was gonna be here, right? So let's see what happens. And he is shoving it out. I mean, it was already shoving, don't get me wrong, but he does have to recall. Alistair's best bet is to help clear and then recall instead of recalling now, which is what he does. Dude, this guy's actually a pretty good Alistair. This guy's pretty good, period. Cool. Now you just chill out. You have a couple of options. You can go ahead and try to make your way towards middle. If anything pops off mid, you can do something about it. You could recall like you're doing. I highly, I'd highly disagree with us just doing nothing. In League of Legends, it's very important that you don't just do nothing. Because if you do nothing, like you're just wasting time. Because we could have walked up here, maybe got right here. Uh, maybe we could have been up here for a play that's going to happen. Oh, he didn't even go for it. Maybe he could have set it up for him to go on that play. And you could have been right there waiting for that to happen if you would have pinged them. And that could have been a free kill for you. You see we're kind of just doing nothing. We're a force to overextend, so it, that's a really big takeaway that we want to make sure that we're just not doing nothing and just sitting. Because we already know that they're going to freeze it, we walking up here means that we can make a play happen, and if they do decide to push it up, well, we're able to rotate back and get the whiff. Luckily, they broke the freeze, so it's good for us. Alistair goes in. We have no vision on the jungler. We have to be very careful about overcommitting. The jungler shows up. Not even shocking. You try to go for the kill diving, um, but again... It's stuff like that you really have to be careful on because a lot of engaged supports typically do do that. They like to hard engage without actually thinking about, oh, where's the jungler? Like, that's one of the major parts of playing AD carry into that is like you really have to be the one to gauge your own situation of if you follow up or not. Because it's very important you don't die. Like, it's huge that you don't die. Again, we're kind of just doing nothing. You can be going to roam. Help assist with this play. What if Lilia shows up and then Kane goes and then it's a, a, a 3v3? I lied. 3v2. Um, oh, 4v2, huh? If Kane showed up. Can I count? It would have been a 3v2 if uh, Lilia showed up and Kane didn't show up. Then it would be a 4v3 if uh, Whatchamacallit shows up. Because I'm pretty sure if you rotate, Sona's going to rotate too. So it's going to be a 4v3 if Kane shows up with uh, Sona. Oh, she was already looking to make a way. Exactly. I thought so. Can's coming down deep. You can't participate in this. It's not going to happen. I suggest you go take this. This is almost equal to 300 gold anyway. So, it's just not worth it. I mean, you got double kill. I don't even know how. What? Did you just last hit? We have to see this one. Were you even needed? I'm just curious. You weren't. You just kind of last hit. I mean, it's good that you got it. Don't get me wrong. But it would have sucked if you didn't get anything. And uh, you just missed out on all that gold right there. Luckily, it worked itself out. Again, just be cautious. Because little things like that can ruin your whole entire game as an AD carry. And for one of the things that I've noticed is uh, we're wasting a lot of time where there's literally nothing we can do. And then another thing is we're over committing a little bit too much to whatever our team does. We're really, really big on just straight up following everything. Even again, we're about to. You're freaking nuts, man. You're crazy. Good sleep. Nice. Oh, it sucks it went to him, but you played it well. Definitely can continue to chase. Good. Uh, game planks, doing split push things. Does he actually get that tower? Oh, no. Super close, though. All right, we need to do our best to get out of lightning phase. Like, quick. So we can impact the rest of the map. We got him, but it's kind of the same situation. You see how all in you're ready to go? 
Not your initial all-in. I think that was fine. The initial all-in, you thought she was cut out. That's beautiful. I don't really mind that. Th that's probably what I would have done as well. But this right here, after the ult comes, you knew it was already a bad situation from the get-go. We can see Silas coming. I mean, maybe we didn't see him coming. But we already knew it was a bad situation from the get-go because you dipped out. So maybe now you're thinking, well, if I could just get close enough, he'll, he'll be able to taunt and get the double kill. Which is true. Which is true. But again, it's the fact that rotations are going to happen. You're in, high, you're in a high enough elo to know if a play lasts too long, they are going to rotate. So this right here was doomed from the start because the play lasted so long. Again, you know, they got him, but we died. And if we're going to be the carry, we can't be dead. Right? I know what you were trying to do, but in that situation, I just think you should have backed off after you decided to. Also, it's just very unlucky that he had a Galio R. But that's that, that, those, those are just things you have to think about, though. You know? If you really do want to make the Grandmaster and then Challenger, like, these are some really big aspects that we're missing if we want to get that far. It's the one thing about Challenger players, man. They think about everything. Like, a lot of you guys might think, like, you know, there's not really much to League of Legends. It's a simple game. Nah. On Challenger level, like, the game is ridiculous. That's always why I say I like coaching challengers, because, like, the way that they learn, or in the way that you can talk to them, is so different from the way that you would talk to, like, uh, a gold, a platinum, or a diamond. Like, it's so different, because they know so much. All right, anyway, back to the game. So we're going here mid. We're looking to rotate. You see? You do it here. When there's nothing to do, you look for something to do. But then in landing phase, when there's nothing to do, we just AFK. You already know what you should be doing, so you should be doing that in your laning phase as well. It's not just a, it's not just a mid to late game type of thing. Rotations are huge. Get it all in there. Okay, we have no R for this dragon fight. You have to keep that in mind. Position accordingly. What you buying? You bought a kraken. I don't really think you need a kraken in this game. You could have gotten Gale Force. Gelforce or uh, maybe not shield bow, but I think Gelforce would have been good just to keep your dashing. I've noticed a lot of people like Kraken though because of it, the benefit that it has with um, with uh, with your lethal tempo, as well as it gets you your your transformations pretty well. Whereas if you go Gelforce, your transformation is going to be kind of screwed. I'm not going to lie. You have to build a specific way, but. But in this situation, there's a lot of things that you'd want to just dodge out of the way instantly. Um, the Gangplank Barrels, the Lily Accuse, the uh, Silas E, right? Or the, the Everfrost, the Ash Volley or Ash Arrow if you're fast enough. And then the Sona Stun, like her, her ultimate. So a lot of things that we could just dash out of the way of if we had Gale Force. Again, I think Kraken's fine, but that's just, just a thought. All right, so let's see how this fight goes. So we have no flash, so realistically we can't really go into the pit because we'll be trapped if the fight breaks out. We're doing a good thing by, by backing away. We go in, we know that majority of their team is over here. Like somewhere here, 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 maybe over this way. So we need to be somewhere over here so we can jet up towards the, uh, the jungle if problems arise. You got the last of the dragon, nice. I'll probably just leave. I mean, at that point, you're just making, waiting for to get a kill. So, I, mean, I can't really knock you for that. I think, and all this fight was played well. Aside from, I think you should have went up. But it looks like you were looking to hit Dragon, so it was fine. Good job. Sucks we lost that fight, but, you know. But, you yeah. know. Alright, now it's going to come down to you just have to be better than the ADC. We're at that point where better ADC wins. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're going down here to participate with this fight. You realize you weren't needed, so you walk away. We know Silas is coming. I think you've seen Silas. Yeah, you yeah, you knew he was coming. We see Ash. We see Sona. Again, we know Silas is here. There he goes. Alright, so it's just Sona. I I love that the way that you're pathing is is very, very safe. I remember when we first started, you used to be like, Sona's over there, Silas over there. 
do you F this, I'm getting this buff. So, it's really nice to see that you've gotten real better at uh, pathing safely from point A to point B instead of going the, the hard way. The downside is our damage is pretty much you and Kane. Their damage is their entire team. But the bright side is our team comp is better. So it's kind of like a mixture. Okay, we're recalling what we can get. I think I definitely would have liked to see you go magic resist here. They have three AP users, basically. And we're just getting more damage. I mean, I would have liked to either, even, even if you weren't going to buy an actual, like, Hex Shrinker or... Honestly, I really think that Woodson would be phenomenal this game. But even if you weren't going to buy them... Oh, we bought Phantom Dancers. I mean, I think Woodson might be a little bit overkill. Anyway, if, if, <laughs> if you weren't going to actually buy Hex Shrinker uh, or a Woodson, I would like to see just a Null Magic Mantle just to help. Especially because you have enough. You just sell this, and you sell that, and you have enough for a null. You're losing out on a little bit of damage, but you keep a little bit of your survivability. Because of the Kraken build, you don't really have much of a way, much of a wiggle room, to not get hit by things. Silas has a lot of AoE. Sona has very easily hit a, um, easily hit AoE, and then Lilia has AoE as well. So you're going to get nicked regardless. Holy shimoli. Bounced? Okay, cleansed out. I don't think cleansing there was worth it. Um, it didn't look like you were going to get attacked. And the reason why I think it's not worth it is because you still have Lilia ult to deal with. You still have Ash ult to deal with. Eating this ultimate is fine because there's nobody around. So what if you get Ash ulted or Lilia ulted here? Like, you're screwed. Hopefully it doesn't happen. Okay, you get slept. Um, but it didn't really go bad for you. But you see my point. Like, that could have been really, really bad if you needed to sash or cleanse the uh, the sleep or the stun. Perfect, perfect. Please tell me we get this dragon. Okay, so I, I want to make this as a point, and it doesn't even matter what elo you are. I want to make this a point that if the dragon gets low, stop hitting it and let them smite it. Your jungler already, already has has to compensate for the teammates and the enemy. At this point, it's just better for us to just let him smite it. You see right here, we were getting ready to auto I think you were gonna hit your, your mark, right? It was like one hit away. Yeah, if he didn't smite it, you are gonna mark it. And then what if he just missed smites because you got it lower? The dumbest things happen with junglers. And when I coach junglers, a lot of them do miss smites because someone decided to burst it down at the last second. Be very cautious about that. In that situation, it wasn't really close to getting stolen except for like GP, maybe. Maybe if you popped it and it was at one HP and GP's ult stole it. I mean, I've seen it happen before. Just let the jungler smite it for 900. All right, this is one of those fights where it's up to you. Let's see how it works. You got this, I believe in you. Okay, we're going on to that Sona. We know we don't have cleanse. We need to be extremely careful. We don't have sash either. You cannot be face tanking like this. <clears throat> I know you're trying to get damage off, but it's up to you right now to win this to fight for your team. Holy shin. What are you doing, buddy? Holy shmo. Holy crap. <clears throat> Holy moly donut shop. Thing is, we've done. Yeah, oof. Maybe? Wait, maybe? Penta? Penta? You got this. He's like, I'm not even gonna try. I believe in the Penta, dude. Um, okay. So, the main things that I see that could have definitely turned this game, I won't say you would have won it, but definitely made some things happen. Landing phase. We're just AFK not doing anything when you know that they're going to freeze it way towards this tower. So I would like to see you just rotate. Go do something. Because you could have made it so that Galio sets up a play here for you. You get a free kill. 
not only does that help your Galio, but that helps you as well. And the wave is down here, frozen. They're going to see you pop out, either they're going to shove, or they're going to keep it frozen. Either way, it's a win-win, because you're doing something with it being frozen. And I think that happened two times where you just AFK and didn't really do anything um, during the laning phase. Another thing that I think we need to work on is being so committed to every single fight that your teammate starts. You're very, you're a very all-in type of player, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's a bad thing when you're not the one committing to the play yourself. Like, someone else is committing, so then you just follow. That's not how it should work. You should definitely be calculating these things in your head before you just hit that go button. Um, I know you're antsy to hit the go button. That's in, within your entire gameplay. But make sure it's you that's choosing to pick that, that go button, not your teammate. Because a lot of the times we just end up in a really, really bad situation because of our teammates. So those are two things that I think that could have uh, definitely helped a lot this game, personally. So I hope this helped. Congratulations on being a master once again. Um, you're a beast. You're a beast.